The Immortal John Hancock here, and today I thought I'd do a fun video about game room ideas. You know, and I've done things right, I've done things wrong uh, with my game rooms and studio, and just thought I'd just talk to you and give you some advice. Uh, you do you, and you can do your game room the way you want. But if you're looking for suggestions, I get people asking me all the time about my setup. Uh, I do some things uh, that I really am happy about and other things. I would totally change a lot of things in my game room. But these are the things that I have learned along the way. I thought I'd just share them with you. Apologize, I have some allergies. So if I sound a little nasally, i uh, got some allergies going on. All right. I think first and foremost, when you set up a, a game area, game room, game closet, game shelf, whatever you have, uh, you need to focus on a purpose. What is the purpose of this area? Is it to play? Is it to display? Is it a little bit of both? Is it? Do you have a YouTube studio? Is this a place where you can do content creation or something else? And so when you set up your game area, have a function, a goal, kind of a theme, uh, I think that's going to be uh, impacted by what how it turns out. And again, going back to that functional versus display. Uh, when I initially had things in my garage, I had a lot of things out and displayed. And I found that uh, I wasn't using them as much as I thought. And so you want to be very careful when you have your games out uh, that, that they're protected uh, with protectors or dust covers, especially if, depending on what climate you're in, mold versus dust. Uh, you want to be careful with that stuff, especially if it's exposed, uh, to, to make it last as long as possible. You know, uh, vintage original games and, and consoles are getting expensive. And so you want that to, to last as long as possible. The other thing to consider is budget. That's right, budget. Uh, I've seen many a gamer go over budget and that can cause major problems. And so you want to stay on a budget and uh, you know have X amount of dollars and you know try to stay within your budget. You know, I've I've done talks at game expos in the past years on staying on a budget and uh, the importance of that. Um, I've had a lot of people share with me that you know it's caused fights uh, with their uh, significant others as well as uh, you know just just getting in trouble financially you know I I try to stay on a budget still to this day uh, my spending is cut way back you know things are expensive fully appreciating what you have uh, can go a long way uh, thrifting uh, going to thrift stores yard sales uh, upcoming season of yard sales you're going to be able to find some good deals if you are into that and there's many channels focused on that um, you can still find some good deals uh, around in my area. It's dried out pretty much You can still find the occasional good deal, but it is it is challenging in my area So that's gonna vary from place to place. All right, the next one shelving I get asked a lot about shelving and uh, For the most part I've done custom shelving uh, You can go to a Kia you can get a you know a glass display You can get a nice nice setup and I have a little bit of that back here. That's an IKEA shelf but uh, the other kind of unique setup that I have is on my other side and I use Sterilite mini crates and you can get these in a 12 pack on Amazon. The link will be below to that and you can group these together. It does fit uh, the 2600 boxes with protectors pretty closely. Odyssey 2, uh, you name it. It's a, it's a nice little mini crate. It does add up in price if you want to put them together. Uh, I have bolted it to the wall. So, you know, I, I have a house and so um, bolt it to the wall and you can use zip ties to tie them together. Um, here's a picture of what it looks like all put together. Uh, it does add up in cost, but it does hold games nicely and they won't fall or everything. It's safe. It's safe around kids. Um, I've, I've had that in my studio a long time and so it, it they last a long time and uh, they do bend a little bit over time Depending on the weight you put on them, but I've been very happy with going with that route All right, uh art art. There's so many different ways you can go with art. You can make art You can have someone draw you something uh, The other option is something like grid studio and grid studio sent this to me and it is an option and so 
going the route of Grid Studio. They do a lot of consoles and game uh, consoles and themes. And I had to show you this because I'm a big Sega guy. So I'm open this up here. So then you get something awesome like this and absolutely gorgeous. And you know, this could be a focal point of a game room. Maybe your Atari, maybe your Nintendo, maybe your Sega, maybe your PlayStation, or maybe you're something else. But you know what? Looks absolutely fantastic. And if you want this and more, you can check out the link below. And awesome. So Grid Studio does stuff, but they're not the only people in town. Uh, my buddy Rock Solid Productions, he does like, you know, game themed signs that light up. And he has, he's always updating them. He's an excellent friend and he does like 3D printing and stuff. So Rock Solid Productions, link will be to his channel. He does stuff like this. And you know what, uh, just a good friend of mine. And so he does a bunch of signage and that might be another route to go. Or you can have good friend Thor did the wood burning of tortoises, new release on Game Boy Advance. So there's stuff like that. <laughs> you, could, you could go a whole bunch of different routes. Or um, I've had this sign in my collection a long time from a fan and I love it. And so, yes. So you can go the route like wood burning or, or uh, you know, all different ways of making arts and signs. Put this back where it belongs. Love it. So that's just one option, but you can go the route of vintage. Uh, you know, you can go with something like this. You know, I have a 2600 Junior you can have vintage uh, game items, controllers. You can have a controller display. Uh, you can have vintage games. Or what's becoming more popular is stuff like a mini collection. What's nice about this is you can represent something vintage, spend less, and have it functional where you can still play it. And, you know, this just came out. I did a review on it. Uh, the Atari 400. The, the 400 from Atari. Retro games. Anyways. That is uh, kind of the more ongoing popularity because it's mixing old with new. And, uh, you know, I've seen a lot of collections, a lot of, a lot of game rooms just really centered, focused in a, you know, a, a curated collection, and it looks fantastic. You also can go the route of adding figurines and toys of the same era. I think of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Transformers, Star Wars, just to name some of the big ones, G.I. Joe, uh, you can mix and mingle that stuff or you can have game theme action figures or toys or related items, accessories, uh, pop culture, and even music, you know, cassette tapes, uh, vinyl, record player, uh, you know, a stereo from the 80s. You do you. I mean, the bottom line is that you make your game area what, what represents you and what you like, and it doesn't really matter what other people think because at the end of the day, it's your game room and your area. Uh, I absolutely love my game studio. Uh, I spent a lot of time here and uh, you know, I've really enjoyed uh, the, the, the purpose of it is to share videos with you over the years. And I'm really grateful that I have it. And uh, I've tried to add things that I enjoy in it. Uh, the other thing that you can add is arcade machines or even, you know, stuff like uh, one up arcades or uh, you know, ra uh, you know, MAME setup or something else or vintage. And so arcade machines are uh, a little bit more challenging if you go the original route, even like original pinballs, pinball. But if you're t technical and you can work on them, uh, hey, they can be fantastic. My arcade setup is probably the most popular. People come in and they just want to start playing them. I have them set up and, and uh, family members come in and play them occasionally. So it's nice to see that. Uh, especially the Pac-Man one. I believe it or not, my 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 original one-up arcade, my my Pac-Man arcade setup back there is probably played the most. I bring it into my classroom at the end of school and let students play on it. So it's 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 it has some use. But you know what? At the end of the day, that's what games are for: is to play, is to use. And so. Uh, thank you so much for coming and viewing this channel. What do you think? What are your other suggestions? These are just some game room ideas. I didn't list everything 
wasn't so supposed to be comprehensive, but I just wanted to share with you. Anyways, thank you for coming to this channel. If you like what you see, consider hitting that like and subscribe button and clicking the bell as I'm uploading videos every week. You folks are wonderful and beautiful. Let's keep it positive. This is the immortal John Hancock, and you take care.